Imagine this. You've reached the peak of your career, achieved more than you ever thought possible, yet deep down, you're miserable. You're stuck, you're unfulfilled, and you know there's something more out there. But how do you walk away from everything that you've worked for? What if the life you truly want is on the other side of fear? That's the story of today's guest, Anna, who is the founder of Wandering Roots. Anna went from managing a molecular diagnostics lab to building a thriving business hosting transformational retreats all over the world for yoga enthusiasts. But her journey wasn't easy. It was filled with difficult decisions, uncertainty, and big leaps of faith. Welcome back, action takers, to another episode of the IDK WTF I Was Doing podcast. I am your host, David B. And here we break down the real life stories of entrepreneurs who, just like you, once had no idea what they were doing. Our goal is to share these stories to help you find your own path to success. In today's episode, we'll dive deep into Anna's journey, how she overcame the fear of leaving behind a successful career and found fulfillment in building a business that's all about travel, yoga, and transformation. If you've ever dreamed of breaking free from the nine to five or creating a business around your passions, this episode is gonna spark something inside of you. So let's thank our sponsors and then we're gonna dive right into it. How can a single book be worth $1.5 million? In a hidden corner of the world, a collection of unparalleled wisdom has been discovered. This book and the story behind it has the power to revolutionize your approach to success. Written nearly a century ago and lost to time, this book contains the foundational principles that have shaped the lives of the most successful people in history. Only a select few have had the chance to see it, but now you can too. This isn't just a book. It's a priceless masterpiece that holds the key to unlocking your potential. Are you curious? Then go to idkwtfpodcast.com slash book or click the link in the show notes below to see the full story and find out why this book is considered a priceless treasure as well as how it can influence your life forever. Again, check it out at idkwtfpodcast.com slash book. And welcome back, action takers. I am David B, and I am here with the awesome Anna with Wandering Roots, a really, really cool business model where she gets to travel with strangers like full time, which is pretty yeah. cool, right? The audience heard a little bit about you in the intro, but why don't you kind of tell us your story and how you came into this, like the dream that everyone wants? We all want to travel, right? Right. Yes. I just turned 40 this year. And at the young age of 28, I had to have neck surgery. And I was in a neck brace for four months. And I just had so much time to think about my life, <laughs> my life choices. And at the time, I was given probably the biggest opportunity in my old career. I was a lab manager in a molecular diagnostics lab. And so I had found the most success that I I would have I would have never thought that I would have had that much success. And I was miserable. I was so miserable. And I was pretty terrified at that realization. And I also was like, I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> but I slowly started just doing things that terrified me, but also intrigued me and kind of got comfortable with being on uncomfortable and tried new things. And I eventually took yoga teacher training and I was in a room full of 11 other strangers. And I had never really been in a situation where everybody was so open to each other, just supportive, caring, understanding, and just there were no expectations and just a lot of love. And I thought I could take my love for travel combined with now teaching yoga and host retreats and sort of create that same type of environment for other individuals to to honestly get away and think about what they want out of life. Because I think sometimes you get caught in the motions. I had been doing that for the first 20 some years of my life. And I also was very now aware of like my own mortality. Like in your 20s, you, you think old people die and that's it, you know, but I was like, life is short and I there has to be something more. And I want to squeeze every drop I can out of it. 
It's um, amazing. Yeah. So what, so you had your job and you were unhappy or miserable, which happens so much. Yeah. So what was kind of the step that you took? Cause that's a big jump. You're just like, yeah. And now I do yoga retreats, right? And it took some time. I, when I had that moment of realization, I had actually been hired to build a lab for a startup company based in Canada and I'm in Michigan. And I was given the opportunity to be an entrepreneur with none of the financial risks. I built the lab, I bought the equipment, I hired the staff, I made all of these decisions to make this thing happen. And it empowered me to think differently. I never even thought about being an entrepreneur. I never thought about running my own business. I never whatever. And I actually was like, going to take a job more in like a sales role for a different company because I thought I still wasn't thinking big enough. I was still thinking I just need to make a change in the same like field. And so when I tried to quit, my boss, the owner, gave me a lot of money to stay. And so like a coward, I went to my husband and I said, I think you should start your own landscaping business because he had been doing it for 15 years. And I thought, he still is passionate about it. If he's going to work that many hours, he should work for himself. And I would figure out everything else. I would figure out website, social media, bookkeeping, whatever. And we did that and it fed my soul for probably the first year or two, but then it didn't feel enough like my own thing. And I wouldn't want to jump in on that because that's yeah. something I see happen over and over whenever I'm working with clients too is, uh, you know, they build up a lot of momentum and then something in the world tries you get tested to get yeah. pulled back into your normal life you know and whether it's whether there's a failure or something or your boss says no let me just give you more money to stay and not do your own thing and every time so it's it's really the world just testing us to see hey are you really 100%. ready are you really ready and so that's amazing that you were i like to I like to say that the universe is nudging you. It's just like you haven't, it's just nudging you in the right direction because you haven't really, you don't have the clear path yet. It's never a clear path, but you know what I mean. And absolutely, I agree with you. There's little tests. You did the landscaping business with your husband. And so you got Mm -hmm. like a taste of that because that's, you know, that's good business. And then kind of what happened after that for you to do your own? So in the interim, I was still, I was teaching yoga. I was meeting a lot more entrepreneurs. I was sort of networking. And I literally was just sitting at a restaurant with a friend. And I said, I really just want to host a retreat. I just, I want to try it. And I picked a place three hours north of here in a beautiful setting and thought we'd do it for a long weekend and just see how it went. And it's I learned the most in the first two retreats I've ever hosted. I've hosted, I think, 22 now and mostly international now. They're mostly week-long international. But those first two, I learned a lot and and how I wanted it to. Like the first one, we were at a resort and it wasn't private enough and for, for my preferences. And also I didn't enjoy the food and be on someone else's schedule. So now we have our own chef on staff with better. So did, were you doing yoga the whole time? Like that was just your passion? You yeah, do- sort of. No, I, I like, I, I had so much chronic pain after I had neck surgery and I, oh. someone just mentioned it to me. One of my massage therapists is like, you should maybe give this a shot. And it ended up being more of a, I think anybody that's practiced long enough, it's more of a mental benefit mm-hmm. than a physical once you get into meditation and things like that. But initially, I was just trying to heal an old injury and live a life without having to rely on Western medicine all the time. Yoga is actually one of my favorite things to do. You know, I came from a lot of weightlifting background and yoga is like the best still. Yeah, I agree. It kind of meets you where you're at. I've been doing it now for, God, over 10 years. And it's just looked different in so many different seasons of my life. It's pretty awesome to have one thing that can kind of go carry you through. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. So you got went got injured and then you went into yoga to kind of help it. Then you found yourself in a room full of just amazing yes. women. And then yes. you were like, okay, I want this all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that initially I wanted to create environments where people could be seen and um, have space and connect. Uh, And then I, it's sort of morphed into, we journal question and we do 
excursions and sort of spend a lot of time talking about what we want out of life. I want everybody to live a life they love. And Well, actually, why don't you walk me through like a full routine, like a full day at one of your retreats? Someone okay. books with you, you guys go off, like what exactly happened? Sure. We have excursions every day and we do practice yoga every day, but I always guess to choose our own adventure. I want you to pick and choose things from the itinerary that best serve you in the present moment. So if you eat a nap instead of, you know, going hiking with us, then that is what you should do. You know your body better than anybody else. And I like to, I just want to be the approachable brand. I don't want yoga to seem elite or too hard to try. Everybody's a beginner once on their mat. And I just want to encourage people to step out of their comfort zone. I think that's where the magic happens. And yeah, but also yeah, well, alone time is great too. So <laughs> yeah, tell me like, so you do a retreat, like someone books with you, what happens yes. right after they book? Yeah. So we have a email sequence of like what to happen because there's usually six to nine months leading up to when we actually leave. And so it's just kind of like nice to stay in communication and let people know what's co- people like to know what's coming. They like to, they like to be on a heads up and stuff. And once we meet in Zoom a month before the retreat, we get to talk about everything. I show everybody what I'm packing. We talk about the excursions in more detail. And then everybody gets to see each other's faces so they can find each other in the airport because we have a driver pick them up at the airport so they don't have to worry about anything. And then either the host, me and my co-host, or a private driver drives us around for the week. We have all of our meals in the house by a private chef. She accommodates everybody's allergies and food restrictions. And then my other friend, Bestie, is a photographer. And we bring these flying dresses. And we spend an afternoon in beautiful scenery where everybody sort of gets to connect and cheer each other on and put these really pretty dresses on and be a model for a day. It's fun. Okay, perfect. So, and then, yeah, then kind of what do you guys do on the on the trip? Yeah, so the most recent one we just went to is Scotland. So we one day took a boat cruise to an island where there was four inhabitants and went hiking. And then we ate smoked salmon and fresh seafood that they caught that morning on the boat and went to a distillery on a different island on the way back. We hired the Korang, which is one of the most iconic hikes on the Isle of Skye. Went to a really cute pub on the way home because I like everybody to kind of like experience the culture as well. Every night we say what our favorite thing was of the day and what our biggest challenge was of the day. I'm trying to think. We just, we eat a lot of good food. We talk a lot. We hang out. We do yoga every day. Some people don't do it at all. And then the photographer takes group photos and like scenery shots of, you know, like a mother or daughter come and they want their picture taken everywhere we go. I like yeah. people to be able to check out on, on their phones if they don't want to be on and disconnect. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's awesome. And then, so after, is, do you do like a final day kind of? Yeah, the thing? last day is yeah. usually really restorative. We try to go to like a day spa or have a massage therapist come on. And a lot of people spend half of the day packing or whatever. So we just try to keep it loose and light. And then we sort of have like a... I don't want to, like a closing ceremony almost where everybody gets to share their favorite thing or anything they want to share. And we keep in touch in the WhatsApp group that we create before we get together. And yeah. I usually get sad on the last day and it goes fast. <laughs> and then it's like you're like yeah. saying goodbye to your college roommates or your old friends, you know? Yeah. Like so much bonding happens so quick. Oh, uh, when very you're... fast. Like yeah. the first night, strangers are friends. There's so much <laughs> talking. Everybody's super nervous. And then after mm-hmm. the first dinner, everybody's fine. So. Yeah, exactly. And then, so do you do any kind of post follow-up? Like, do you have a community that everyone's in? We, with? For the most part, it's just in the WhatsApp groups and stuff. We'll meet up here and there, especially if a lot of our guests are from West Michigan, not everybody. So we are able to still meet in person. But they, a lot, of, we're very fortunate in that a lot of people come year after year. And so they'll pick the same trip to come to the next time next retreat see each other again and or come on multiple so and around how many do you host each year 10 to all retreats yeah normally six next year i'm only doing three just slowing down a little and is it mostly returning women i would say about 50 percent we have next year we're going to belize iceland and the dolomites and everybody that's booked on iceland and the Dolomites has been on one before, which is unheard of. That's never happened before. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 
Cool. And then what else should everyone know about these retreats? Like what's your biggest kind of call to action? It's we're a really good time. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I just think that there's a lot of pressure to show up. Everybody wants to like be loved and accepted for who they are, not who they're trying to be. And this is like for real a space that you can do that. I'm really proud of that aspect of it. And it's just, I think sometimes too, women, there can be like just clicks or weird energy. And that we just never, fortunately, we just never have any of that. So it's okay to be yourself. Yeah, that's really cool. That's awesome that you create that space for people. You know, it's so important to have those those little like nooks in life just yeah. to kind of get away, be yourself. Um, because we're always trying to be someone for someone else or yes. something for someone else in every aspect of life. So it's cool that you you have that spot to empower women for it. I So our podcast is the IDK WTF I was doing podcast. So it's really helping to normalize that feeling of kind of uncertainty, especially when starting new businesses. So we have a lot of entrepreneurs that might want to do exactly what you do, or they might want to like even book, have you book the retreat for them. And so... I think, why don't we take a short break? I, and when we come back, I would love to hear about like some of the workings of your business, some of the stuff that's like really going really well for you and maybe some stuff that's been pretty difficult that you've had to overcome. Does that sound like a cool plan? Sounds great. Awesome. All right, we'll take a short break and be right back. Are you drowning in tasks, feeling stuck and overwhelmed or just plain frustrated with your business? Have you been spending hours each day with no real results and confused about exactly what to do next? Are you feeling a bit lonely because you don't quite know how to find the support you're looking for? Well, I understand how you're feeling because I went through this for years. I'm David B. and I'm here to help with the best solution to get you out of this funk. Now, Tony Robbins says to create the product you always wish you had. And really, I always yearned for a knowledgeable friend who I could message for answers, hacks, or ideas. But all I found were $1,000 video courses or gurus charging the hundreds for an hour of coaching, where they ended up just trying to sell me something else anyway. That's why I created my monthly unlimited teamwork sessions, to give you the support I wished I had at a fraction of the cost and exponentially more value than anything out there that's similar. Get started with me today and enjoy virtually unlimited access to my personal cell phone number every day with no contracts, no commitments, and you'll have hands-on support whenever you need it. You can work with me as your personal mentor, your assistant, or your accountability buddy, always just a message or a phone call away. Imagine not having to purchase another book, another online workshop, or some masterclass because you can just text me, David B., your buddy, who has been at the forefront of this industry for a decade. And because this is so personalized and it's dramatically less expensive than you'd ever expect, spots are very limited. So don't wait. Go to idkwtfpodcast.com forward slash David B and say yes to your success today. Welcome back. So we just heard kind of about the amazing retreats that Anna runs with the wonderful woman in her world. And what I'm, yeah, I'm really curious, like, number one, how do you find the people to get into your retreats? And then what is like the day-to-day -day aspect of booking that look like for you? So you mean guest-wise or host? Uh, very bad. So guess wise, we had a lot of referrals. I, I will tell you that going from working in molecular diagnostics in a corporate setting and then trying to run your own business completely different, it takes a minute to build an audience. And it was, there was a very long period of just talking to no one, of just creating content and hoping somebody saw it. And also I think it's, it's hard to talk about your business in the beginning. You're so like, ooh, I don't know exactly what I'm doing or is this really a thing? And you're terrified and like whatever. But if you don't talk about it, no one knows about it. So you got to get over it. So I tried to just network for a while, just go to local business events and just try to connect with other business owners and hoping that sort of spread the word that way. I got a social media account, took a course, tried to build a following that way. One of my 
co-host, the photographer, she helped me make a logo and build my website and took all of my photos so that I didn't look like a hack. <laughs> Having a photographer friend is one of those great things. <laughs> Invaluable. Yeah. Yes. And initially, we ha- she was like, I'll go with you on the first one. I'm like, good. I have no idea what I'm doing. It was just like, <laughs> it's like friend thing. But then we were like, people really liked not having to take their phone with them and having their picture taken by a professional. And so she's just on staff all the time, of course, now. And then my second retreat ever where I mentioned I wanted to have my own chef. I have one. She canceled on me a month or two months before the retreat. And I posted in just some local like business groups on Facebook, sort of in a panic <laughs> that they needed somebody to fill this role. And Abby, my chef, who's been on every retreat since the second one, came to one of my yoga classes. We talked for four hours and I booked her flight the next day. We just wow. barely knew each other, but I liked her instantly. She was great. She was incredible. Really? So, yeah. And so are you a registered travel agent? So you do you only earn income from people buying the ticket? Correct. Yes. We do like a purchase price, a package. It's all inclusive besides your flight because it's too hard to try to figure out where people are coming from and what that cost is going to be. But all of your meals, excursions, transportation, all of that is included. Are you partnered with another company that handles all of that? As well, no, I do like you have doing to it all out. I have to pick it all out. I actually like doing the logistics and I really love a good spreadsheet and I like figuring out the budget and things. Okay. It is hardest to find the venue, but I have made several connections with like luxury property managers that aren't available to the public and stuff. So it was, okay. it's still difficult. It's not as difficult as it used to be. Yeah. I mean, it sounds tedious and complicated, which is well, why that, people pay you to do it all. To, to plan it now, yes. Yeah. And I actually, that's the part I like, I like seeing it yeah. all come together. So interestingly, I did join like a travel agency company for a little bit. I wanted to do retreats. It was something I was thinking, I've been thinking about for my master. I have a Colorado mastermind group. And cool. I was like, that would be kind of cool to go down to like Belize or Costa Rica or something. And yeah. Some Amazing. And then I was like, so I worked with someone else and she brought me on her team. And I was like, oh, I hate this immediately. It was uh, now you know. terrible. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm never, I'm never doing that. So it is a skill set that you have that you might not even be aware. It's amazing because it's, oh, I understand. It's terrible. Like the universe nudging you though, right? Like <laughs> here's a, here's a void, fill it. You enjoy this, help other people. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So what's probably the biggest mistake that you've made mm. while running this business? So my very, the second retreat I ever hosted, I hosted in Canada, which isn't that far away, but it was five days international and like still no one knew anything. (laughs) I didn't have a very big audience and I definitely didn't give enough time to market. Even though I could put it together fast doesn't mean you can sell it that fast. So I, I recommend dreaming big, but starting small. And after that, I was like, okay, I have to to do some local ones. I got to do a smaller offering and price point. When you're selling anything, you're convincing somebody that they need your thing. But when you're also spending the night with them, you have to also convince your guests that you're not a serial killer. It's a big ask. So it's like a partial joke, but it's also, it's a big ask. There is more money involved, more time, and it's not some product off the internet. It's a bigger ask. And so I really realized how much nurturing a new client needs for that bigger ticket price. And I, and just that it takes time, even if you don't want to be patient. Is there something specific you do now that you found that nurtures people better than what you Um, did? I did start doing a local one, a smaller offering every single year. And just if somebody was sort of like kind of watching or sitting on the fence for the last couple of years, like this was a smaller thing of like, come try us out. If you hate us, you'll know within the first long weekend and you won't, you know, make the mistake of flying overseas for seven days. Yeah, that. I also started blogging a lot in the beginning in like 2018 and just shared anything, anything that I thought would help somebody to try to connect on, on a little bit deeper level. That helped a lot of people started sort of engaging more in the, you know, like an email sort of way, but it was like an easy first step. Yeah. And that's, for me, the thing that I always thought 
which got me into it before I realized I hated it, was that like, it seems like travel is such an easy thing to sell because it's beautiful. Like if you're traveling, you're taking pictures, people see it. It's like the product is the dream, you know, but it's also difficult and like, there's so many different facets to it. Yeah. I think that some people can get hung up with like childcare, dog care, taking time off and then and then they get past all of those hurdles and then it's like oh god i gotta is my passport expired how will i get there some people are very very anxious well if i could wave a magic wand i've got the magic Mm -hmm. wand here and i could just fix one thing in your business what would that thing be good question my, the thing I've probably thrown the most energy and have the least satisfaction with is always like marketing. I like have this background of writing like published papers and stuff is just very like factual. And, and so it's almost of like unlearning to write copy or, you know, be creative, which is something I never identified as first. Yeah. And I think, I just think marketing is sort of a game of like trying it if it doesn't work. It doesn't mean it might not work for the future. <laughs> and then, then if something does work, it might not work in the future. It's it's just like I very much, I guess, as a scientist, like repeatable results. In marketing, it's not repeatable results. Because the game always changes. That's yes. the problem. The algorithms change. The, yeah. the rule changes their rules. What people are paying attention to isn't consistent. Yeah. So just getting views would be nice. It's just hard. It's the thing that, like I said, I just put a lot of energy into and just had probably the least, I guess, success, if you could call it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And so your goal is to, is your goal to get more like retreat clients or is your Um, goal to get more businesses that want you to plan for them? Second one, I'm sort of got a little burnout from travel. So here's what happened. I took my two passions and the way that I find the most like, you know, introspection and relaxation and downtime. And I took them and made them my career. And so this year when I turned 40, I I put two retreats on the calendar in hopes that I would just open up space to plan others and have more flexibility and just only leaving and traveling when I wanted to, to go on my trips just for me or I'm not working or scouting a location or taking a group. And so I'm more than halfway through that year. That's sort of somewhat of a partial sabbatical. And I have had so many design clients this year where I've planned their retreats and it's been incredible. I, it's almost like having a conversation with you, but it like, I love to hear how people like started their brands and why they want to host a retreat and like who their clients are. And there's just been such a wide range of like a food photographer, a actress, a psychic medium. I've met so many people doing some really cool things and it's been, it's been fun. And so that part is working well for you or it is that's working what well. you would want more of? So I think I'm pivoting. I... I hate for all of my guests that come on multiple or more have been coming for years to hear this and send me DMs, but it's out there. It's fine. Figure something out. Or I mean, another thing you could do, you know, is train people to do what you do. I, the thing that I think is the strangest part out of everything is that you are not a licensed travel agent because you could be getting paid from the venues that you're booking these things at on top of. Like a commission, for sure. The the majority... Yeah. Um, and that doesn't not happen. It doesn't happen every time. But some of these people, the commission is usually just transferred to the client if I'm planning for them or for me where I get a discount and then I can like create a bigger yeah. net profit. Um, right. Yeah. Services. Do you also do stuff on like meetup.com or anything like that mm-hmm. or reach out to like meetup group owners? No, I haven't. Honestly, I've just been, I don't know if I have good SEO or something. They've kind of just been coming, which has been really nice. But that is something I will look into. How does it write? Yeah, I, I would say like people with big meetup groups, they always want to offer things for their groups that are fun. And if you mm-hmm. could just, I mean, you could just like a kind of a podcasting thing where you're reaching out to be on a podcast. You could yep. reach out to meetup groups and say, hey, this is my thing. Do you guys want to go on a vacation? And then yeah. a lot of I'm people. Like me and Yeah. But yeah. No, that's all. Thank you. Well, perfect. And then if 
either someone who runs a big business has or has a large community and wants to have you do something amazing for them, how would they find out more about you? Sure. My website is your while you are wandering roots.com. Everything's there. Retreats, Perfect. retreat planning services, everything. Oh. You want to just see how detailed oriented I am. You get a free travel guide to, I have over 30 locations in the U.S. I've kept them domestic to try to make them a little easier. Mostly national park based. You can have a free one if you sign up for the newsletter. Perfect. Well, thanks so much. Is there any kind of final words of wisdom that you would like to share with the action taker community that follows the IDK WTF podcast? I think just keep going. I really think it's the difference between the people that do and the people that don't. It's it's not that you're not making mistakes. It's just that you're not making the same ones over and over. You're learning and, and you're picking yourself up and you just keep going. You can do it. Perfect. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for spending some time with us today. Uh, I'm sure they are going to love hearing more about you and the words of wisdom that you shared. It was a pleasure to meet you, and I am excited to see how your journey progresses. Thanks. Thank you for having me on the show. It was lovely. What an incredible journey Anna has been on, from hitting rock bottom in a job that didn't fulfill her, to completely reinventing her life through her business wandering roots. Her story is a powerful reminder of what's possible when you follow your passion and you refuse to settle. Anna's entrepreneurial adventure took her from a career in molecular diagnostics to hosting international retreats that help others reconnect with themselves. And she learned through her own challenges, whether it was pushing past fear, navigating a new industry, or finding her tribe, that success isn't just about finding what you love, it's about creating it. Her journey shows us that the path might not be clear at the start, but if you keep moving forward, those steps will lead you somewhere incredible. Now, for you, action taker, what is holding you back? Is there something you're passionate about, but you're hesitating to pursue because the path seems uncertain? Can you just take a moment and think? Like, what if you stopped waiting for the perfect moment and started taking small steps toward your dream today? Remember, Anna's story is proof that no matter how unclear things seem at the beginning, you can build something amazing by just taking the leap. Whether it's a retreat business, a coaching program, or something completely different, it all starts with the first bold step. So thanks again for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe for more inspiring stories just like this. And if you're ready to keep learning from these amazing entrepreneurs, just hit that follow button and join our community of action takers. Remember, you're not alone on this journey and it doesn't matter if you have no idea what the F you're doing, just keep doing something anyway. Thanks again and we'll see you on the inside.